What kind of movies do you like? Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, I but I but I'm a big horror fan. I just love the. I like that you can you know, I, horror musicals and horror movies and horror everything. I sort of like the variety that that horror gives you. That 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 if you can call it a, a sort of a you know it, it's sort of a box that you're in. But you've got so much leeway with horror, you can you can just go anywhere with it. Comedic or whatever. Like, are you a Shaun of the Dead kind of guy? Or uh... I liked I liked that one. I'm a huge George Romero fan. Anything that he uh, does, I really uh, I really like. And Sam Raimi, like I like the Evil Dead series. The guys that I did uh, that I'm doing these musicals with, are did Evil Dead the musical in Toronto, so where they've got a splatter zone, and so it's the same guys that did that. So yeah, I, I, maybe the I do like the the funny stuff in horror as well. Uh, I like it having comedy. I like it having social commentary. I like it having, you know, there, like, like I said, there's so many ways you can go with that genre. That I would think it would, the hardest horror to do would be a serious horror film mm -hmm. because some people just don't find things very scary what other people find very scary. Yeah. Right. So some person might make a film that they think is very scary and other people are just laughing, saying, Well, what's so spooky about a house? You know what I mean? Like Amityville horror kind of thing, you know? Yeah. I think all horror sort of has a bit of humor mixed up in it, whether no matter how seriously they're 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 doing it, it all sort of has this sort of I mean, just by necessity, it has this sort of cartoony modern horror that's trying to be serious. I, I really find it a little bit too grim. Like there's nothing really fun about it to me, so I, li I just like it to be sort of splashy and bright and and you know I have a bit of a wink to it when when you watch it uh, instead of just this grimness and this torture stuff and you know it's really got to just uh, what about zombie movies? It's got to entertain. I mean... I'm a big zombie fan. Like I said, George Romero. I'm a big fan of his stuff. So. Um, I mean, I love Dawn of the Dead, and and uh, I love Creepshow. And, and, Is there a zombie musical? Uh, like on uh, film? Yeah. Yeah, I think there is, actually. There's a... Uh, uh, well, I don't, I'm not sure. Did uh, There's one called... Uh, there's a musical that I know called uh, The Incredibly Strange Creatures Who See? Died and Became Mixed Up Zombies. That's an old one. <laughs> That's a zombie musical. I have to watch that again, and uh, I'm not sure. It was My Fair Zombie? Was that a musical? Uh, Never saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it either, but <laughs> but I assume it's a musical. But I find film music actually, you're you're, you're what, you, what you're really trying to do is sell the story, right? I I find one of the things that people say after I ask them about a film that I did, they 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 don't even notice the music. That's a good sign, <laughs> which I think is good. Because it's got to, just like the lyrics and the melody in a pop song have to be married. You've got to have the, the emotion and the music in a film needs to be married as well. Well, there isn't too many movies of the budget, I don't think, that like where you're going to get John Williams and the London Philharmonic, you know. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. But that's what I would like to do. Oh, everybody. I, mean, <laughs> I think those days are... Uh, they may not be gone entirely, but... Uh... Well, they're few and far between because it's, it's, a very, it's the very top echelon that gets that sort of budget uh, you know a lot of there's a lot of electronics being used in scores now too um, so you know you've got that sort of synth sound is actually desirable in, in some in some instances right now I find that that synth sounds sounds very British mm -hmm. I think the yeah. Brits use that more so before you know North Americans did because mm -hmm. whenever I hear that, it just, to me, it instantly sounds like a British movie, you know? Which is right. not a bad thing. I mean, the British like make a lot train of movies. Trainspotting sort of thing, that, that sort of... No, more, uh, I don't know, not really Doctor Who, but that kind of... Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, that, they British. were pioneers, that Doctor Who show, that, the, the BBC, uh, Delia Derbyshire and people like that, where it was a... They were real innovators in, in musical, in driving that electronic music ahead. But, I mean, that's um, got to be one of the coolest songs ever, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And you know that was all tape too. That wasn't uh, synth stuff. It was all tape manipulation. The Doctor Who theme. I'm talking really? About. Yeah. What do you mean? Tip? So they would just like samples on tape or the cutting, cutting and pasting tape. No way. So it's like before sampling. 
that's why I mean they were they were they were really ahead of the uh, of the game there as far as uh, electronic music goes. Wow, the classic movies, uh, you know, like Jaws and Star Wars and Indiana Jones. You know, I guess they're all John Williams, but you you know the the theme songs. You know, you know them in, instantly. Yeah. Try to think of Iron Man or any of these. I don't know why there's so many comic book movies out there now, but you, you try to think of any of those, and I can't for the life of me think of hear of any of those songs and i don't know if that's a trend i think it's a, for me it's it's a trend to the worst but i mean why don't people put huck hooks or why why isn't hollywood anyways putting hooks and then good songwriting or i'm not saying they're not bad songs i'm sure they're you know but i mean you don't hear that distinctive sound in in movies anymore it's just almost like the the soundtrack the score is just background not even for mood it's just there you know well, I think part of it is that I, I'm not sure they're that they're playing these songs on the radio like they used to. Like I'm pretty sure the Star Wars theme was on the charts, you know, like it was on the CKOC, like the right. theme from Star Wars. And and I don't I don't think that they're blending, you know, also on the CKOC. CKOC was a station in Hamilton. It was just an AM radio station just pretty typical all across the planet really but when i was growing up they had you know they would do the star wars theme and teenage head and uh you know kenny rogers and uh you know all on the same all on the same chart uh it's 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 crazy and uh, so i'm not i don't think that we have that sort of diversity in radio anymore and that diversity in what people are being bombarded with right at the moment so if we had you know the theme from that whatever you know Marconi wrote for the hateful eight if we had that theme on the you know playing alongside miley cyrus right now we probably see the same sort of uh reaction to it like people would be singing that theme and so you think it's more exposure than opposed to actually catchy songs i think that's part of it yeah the, another modern one is uh howard shore's uh lord of the rings stuff like I think that's pretty uh, catchy in in that classic sort of way. Um, one one of the new Star Wars movies, where I noticed that there was a real clash between the new themes that were coming in and the old themes. Like he was sort of uh, including, and I forget even which movie this was, but he was using some of the old themes that really stood out as beautiful melodic themes. And then the rest of it that didn't have that same melodic quality to Discordant it. Discordant or whatever. There's parts in movie music that you don't want it to be catchy. Because like I said, you want it to drive the action and the action to drive the music. You want it to seem like it's one thing. So if you make it too melodic and too catchy and too hooky, then you're, then you're taken out of the story and you're listening to this hook. So I think a lot of it is sort of purposely trying to avoid uh, that sort of aspect. I I sort of liken it to an aria in an opera versus the sort of spoken parts of an opera. The spoken parts are really, if you listen to them as music, it's really uh, disorienting because because they're trying to sort of mimic a speech pattern. They're not really trying to be hooky and, and, you know, try to draw you into a song. They're not really doing a song. They're doing, they're trying to mimic a conversation. And so that's sort of what I think about that. When I think about movie music, I think about that sort of thing where you're not trying to draw people into a melody. You're trying to, the, the music has another purpose. Uh, so, um, so it's intentional. This it's is... intentional. Yeah. So why, um, Guardians of the Galaxy, I really like that 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 music. Now I don't, I haven't heard it enough to to be able to to hum it, but I think I think it was, from what I remember, it was a good. It was a great. It's a great score. I really I really like it. Or like Wes Anderson, he he does that kind of thing too, where he's purposely pulling you out of the movie. Yeah. Or whatever he's doing, that disco pop. Do 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 do. Was Bill Murray dancing? I watched a movie uh, the other day. It was by Jennifer Lynch called Hiss, and it's H-I-S-S-S, about a snake goddess that that gets revenge on these guys that 
stole her lover. So <laughs> in this movie, there's there's Bollywood sequences. I'm not sure. It's a it's an Indian partly an Indian production, but it's a horror. It's like a gory horror movie with snake women and 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 but also the sort of Bollywood uh, themes and you know about family and losing family members and you know this very a lot of drama and you know <laughs> and there's also dancing like Bollywood dancing and things like that. Maybe the strangest movie I've seen in a long time. Was it enjoyable? It was. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's all you can ask for, How right? Could it not be? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, those those sequences took you out of the story, though. They really took you took you away from the main sort of. I mean, you know, I guess it's just a matter of getting used to the style, atmosphere, right? And there's this style, but again, that she was working. I don't know why she was doing this, but she was working within the sort of the constraints of Bollywood films, and it might have been maybe the producers they. They wanted this sort of. Uh, they needed this to satisfy the Indian audiences, or I'm not sure what it was, but was made a, for an interesting blend. Is there a Bollywood uh, zombie movie musical? <laughs> I don't know. No, maybe not. Oh, yeah. maybe that's something I haven't seen for sure. There's a lot of uh, Japanese. Uh, I was watching uh, no Chinese uh, hopping vampires. A spooky. I think it's called a spooky encounter. And uh, there was sort of this beginning of this this hopping vampire zombie phenomenon sort of thing, and it's sort of a comedy horror again with uh, a lot of martial arts and zombies. It's a it's an interesting blend as well. Well, it's funny when I was a kid growing up on Sunday afternoons or whatever, there was always those kung fu movies on TV, mm -hmm. and as a kid, I loved them. You yeah. know, and you start growing up and you start watching some of these you know Japanese and Chinese movies. You're like, wow, these actually did really like they're really well done. Like yeah. some of them, it's like, like why don't we do this kind of stuff in Western movies? You know what I mean? And yeah. Yeah. like they'll hold like really long takes and they actually show the punches hitting. Yeah. Whereas here, you they always cut on the on the punch, so you don't really see the punch. You know what I mean? Because you know they're not hitting them, but there, yeah, yeah. it's like they're really hitting them. I don't know if they are, but they make it look like they're really hitting them. And it's like, why don't we do this? Like this is like old stuff they've been doing for decades. Yeah, I don't understand why we haven't absorbed more of that. Uh, I guess Quentin Tarantino has. In his movies, yeah, I think yeah. It's, he it's shows that. Yeah, there's a bit more of that happening these days. I think I was just reading something about that, and like in horror, like uh, like I mentioned, The Grudge, like they're sort of bringing a lot of that sort of the the, the Asian horror into the Western uh, world, sort of thing. But there, there there's some creepy stuff that we haven't really uh, tapped into yet. But there are certain things that I think are taboo. You're not allowed to show certain things. You know, like you never really, I've never slowly, you know, <laughs> cut somebody's head off. Like that'd be pretty gory, but I've never seen that in movies. Like there's a lot of things you haven't, haven't seen. And I don't know if there's some major censor that says, well, you can't do it that way. That's just too, you know, traumatic for people to be watching, even though it's still a movie, but there's so much death in movies and stuff. Why not do it, you know, different ways? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a there's a, that uh, ABCs of Death, uh, the short the series of short films, and there's there's a lot of different stuff going on in those. Like it's a, again with short films, they're they're the sort of a place to experiment, and, you know, uh, uh, try new things. And, and there's some really new there's some new ways to die in that in that movie. It's it's pretty good actually. Yeah. And I'm uh, thinking about that hundred what, how many hours was it? Hundred forty seven, hundred twenty seven. The uh, James Franco, he's caught in, in, on a rock. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> that was, he cut his arm off. That was, I never saw that, though. That was pretty uh, intense. I just thought it'd be boring. So <laughs> Let's see your first. You see it. It's, if you're, yeah. It's actually entertaining? I thought yeah, it'd be like yeah, no, two hours of the guy sitting on a rock. I not anything, but see it. That'd it's Danny Boyle. I think we mentioned train spotting before, yeah. but it's it's him. He's He knows what he's doing. He knows how to build the, build the tension up. Because you're waiting for it. The whole movie. <laughs> sort of <laughs> just see it okay <laughs> well, there was a there was a time in the in the 70s where they, where they were in the horror uh, community was sort of going for stuff like that like uh, last house on the left with uh, with rest uh, west craven and um and uh, sean cunningham was producing that but they were sort of taking it it, it people like even earlier like uh, uh 
uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis and people like that that are just you know blood and guts. But but it's because that it's because of what you were what you're saying is that because it wasn't being shown before. Like there was a he was a marketing guy Herschel Gordon Lewis right. So it was like well what 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 niche hasn't been shown yet? Like what haven't what haven't we seen? And that's sort of what he came up with was well we haven't seen blood and guts in, in movies to this extent. And it was just, you know, taking mannequin arms and putting blood on the end. And, but, you know, pretty gory. Uh, using, like, things from the butcher shop and, and, you know, fake stomachs and things like that. So it's, really, you know, kind of cheesy and gory, but it was something that people hadn't seen, so it really made an impact on people's, on the psyche mm -hmm. of people. And Last House on the Left was, it's still brutal to watch. But I have to watch it. I don't think I've seen that Last House on the Left. Yeah, it's pretty, it's intense. And, uh, and they were trying to make it more because before all this, before this time, it was all gothic horror, like Hammer Pictures and, you know, very, uh, uh, like sort of the sensibility was very um, Victorian sort of, eh, I wouldn't call it prim and proper, but it was, it was this classic horror, sort of very conservative classic horror, conventional uh, way of doing things. And it wasn't, it didn't really reflect real life in their opinion. So, so. That's it started driving forward um, or backward. I'm not sure which which way it is. I just watched one called Machine Girl recently. It's another again. It's an uh, that one is Japanese, I think. Um, but man, it was it's really gory and splashy and like really, um, you know, the it was like it reminds me of Monty Python when the blood would sp sp spray out yeah. like from a from a hose. Yeah, there's some, and this is these are recent, fairly recent movies. Uh, so, Machine Girl and Tokyo Gore Police, and you know, there's, and this is not these these aren't yeah, American or you know, these are Asian movies that that are doing this stuff. But I think it might be more have more impact if it's done less in the movie. If you very like, say you have a movie that's say a romance or something like that. And then it builds up, and then there's like a massive horror scene. You know what I mean? That'd be like, whoa, where'd this come from? You know what I mean? And then you go back to the romance story.